Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be creating and backtesting a trading bot strategy using sentiment analysis of different countries' music tastes. Now this is based off the data that I produced in last week's video, so if you haven't already seen that, make sure to go check that out now. It's only about 5 minutes, I'll link it up here and in the description and it'll give you a great background on what we're doing in this video. Okay, let's have a quick look at the data we're going to be using. So, let's start it off. I've got it in CSV format and I've just got it open here in Excel. So we have our date, so that's the week that this uh, audio feature collection is coming from. We've got the countries, and then we've got our different scores. So first, these scores here are just the raw scores in their format, and over on the right, we've got the now the standardised scores. So these scores have been standardised from the raw scores based on the whole of history. So the main score that we're going to focus on is this score here, which if you remember from the previous video is about the positivity conveyed by the music. Okay, so now that we've had a look at the data that we're going to be using, let's have a look at the securities that we're going to be trading. So here on the right we have the countries, and then here on the left we have the corresponding ETF symbol for these countries. So these ETFs typically just track the biggest companies in certain countries. So here we have 24 countries that we're going to be tracking. Now that we've had a look at the data we're going to be using and the ETFs that we're going to be trading, let's now have a look at the actual algorithm itself. So this algorithm is very similar to the algorithm that we developed in the Trading Bot in Python series. If you haven't already watched that series, make sure to go check it out after this video. I'll drop a link in the description. So we've taken quite a few features from the Trading Bot in Python algorithm and used it in here. We have taken the portfolio construction model that we used the execution model that we used, and also a few of the charts that we used. It's also similar in the way that we have a rebalancing function here, which we have scheduled, this time to be every week on a Wednesday, and we also have our scheduled plotting of the charts. Now, we need to manipulate our data, which has come straight from the databases that we produced in my Spotify sentiment video. So here we have our data setup function here at the bottom, which I call in the initialize method here. What this data setup function does is it downloads the two CSVs that I've just shown you, and it produces a data frame with the date and symbol as the index, and then the sled score of the particular audio feature that we want to use. You can see that we also produce two extra outputs, which is a list of all the ETFs, and then we produce a dictionary with the ETFs as the keys and then the country names as the values. This is for the charting function, which I'll show you later. So you can see here that in the initialize method, we just call the data setup function, and then we use that ETF list that we produced to add these equities at minutely resolution. We also set our custom portfolio construction model, which we produced in the Trading Bot and Python series, and the execution model, which we also produce then. Then we schedule the rebalancing every Wednesday, initialize the charts, and then schedule the charting every Wednesday. Okay, so I decided there to be two ways in which you can rebalance the portfolio based on the data. So these different weighting styles is either normalizing it or doing alpha maximization with certain constraints. Now this alpha maximization is what we have in the latest version of our Trading Bot and Python series, and it uses the portfolio construction model and takes the alpha scores, which will be the audio feature Z scores, and tries to maximize the weights of the ETFs times their respective audio feature Z score to certain constraints. Now, the other way that I do this is by normalizing the audio feature Z scores. And what this allows for is a factor weighted performance where we will be invested in all of the ETFs, either long or short, at the same time. Whereas with our alpha maximization, depending on the constraints that we give it, we could be only invested in 10 stocks, or we could be invested in all 24. So you can see here that I've got it set default to normalize. This means that I won't use our portfolio construction model and will just normalize the Z scores for each date and allocate the weights in that way. Next, we move on to a new flag that I've added, which is the market neutral flag. So you could argue that the data for the audio features that we have could also predict where the world stock market is going. And thus, when every country is happy, such as at Christmas, we should be long every country. So setting this market neutral flag to false will allow our net exposure to deviate anywhere from minus one to one. However, keeping it at true, make sure that our net exposure is set to zero. Next, we have the audio feature to use. So as I said before, we're gonna be focusing on positivity conveyed by the music. And then we move on to the portfolio construction constraints, 
which if you're using the alpha maximization weighting style, then you can set turnover and maximum weight constraints. And as I said before, this market neutral flag is a new feature that I've added where it removes the net exposure constraint if it is false, which you can see here. So let's have a quick look at how we manipulate the data to be able to use it in a backtesting format. So remember, as I said before, the data frame that we produce has the date and symbol as the index. So what we do on this first line here is we take the self.time, so we take the algorithm's time, and we create a range between a week ago and the current time and select the data from that. Now, as we know that our data is weekly, we can just reset the index and set it again as just the symbol, as we know that we now have the data for just one date. We then do an if statement on which weighting style we want to use, which produces our portfolio. So if we're going for just a normalize, we're getting a factor weighted performance. And here we determine whether we're equal long short, so that's whether we're market neutral or not. And if we're going for alpha maximization, we generate the optimal portfolio using the optimization that we did in the trading bot in Python series. Once we've got that portfolio, just like before, we execute it using our custom execution model. Okay, so now that we've had a look at how the algorithm works, let's have a quick look at the different charts that we've got going. So these first two charts are charts that I've pulled straight from the trading bot in Python series. And now we've got another chart, which is our country exposure chart. So let's head into charting and see what we do here is we add a series for every ETF that we have. And this is where our ETF country dictionary comes into play because the ETF symbols themselves aren't particularly readable. So we pass in the country name here. For the actual calculation of the data to plot, it's fairly simple. All we do is we take the holdings value of a certain ETF, which corresponds to a certain country, and then divide that by our portfolio's total holding values to get the exposure. And then we plot it for each series. Great, so this is the time you've been waiting for. It's time to find out how it actually performs. I'm not too confident that it's gonna perform that well. If you remember from the previous video, this is data that we've taken from the Spotify charts. We've analyzed all the songs in Spotify charts over time and produced scores for those which then correspond to scores for countries. So I will be surprised if this actually has any alpha in it, but let's find out. So just a quick run through the settings that I've got. I'm going for a factor weighted performance. So we're, all we're doing is normalizing it. We're keeping it market neutral and we're gonna use the positivity one. So we're gonna use valence. As I said before, because we're going for a factor weighted performance, we don't need to worry about the constraints that we set for the portfolio construction model as we're not gonna be using that. So let's go ahead and click backtest. So as you can see, we start it from the start of 2017, which is when we have the data for it. And as you can see, it's going pretty fast along. So I'll join you when it's finished. Okay, so as you can see, it has finished running. And from what you can see, it doesn't seem to have any alpha, any predicting power to it, but it would be interesting to see if our algorithm worked well. And the way to check that is we can look at our country exposures over time. So here we've got the first five countries and you can see that it's a bit of a wish wash of, of squiggly lines. But if we focus on Brazil, for example, so let's have a look at the Brazilian line, you can see the pattern that we've got here. So negative at the beginning and then positive and then a bit of a wave. And we can look at our Spotify sentiment web app Let's focus on Brazil here. Okay, and now let's check the valence series. And there you go, you can see that the pattern is very similar to the one that we had in our trading bot from the country exposure graph. So let's just quickly check another one. Let's have a look at Chile. So we can see here that we've got some pretty prominent features here, such as a spike in September and then an increase mid to late 2018. So let's have a look at Chile then. And there you go, the score is reflective of our country exposures that we had. So it's great to see that our trading bot is working as we expected it to. Okay, now the next chart that we've got is our performance breakdown chart. So we can see that our fees are slowly and steadily increasing over time. And we can see our performance without the fees. As you can see, you're not really getting much from that. Let's have a look at our exposure and leverage. You can see here that as we set it to be market neutral, our net exposure stayed at zero and our gross exposure stayed at one. Okay, so now let's have a look at going not market neutral and let's have a quick look at the charts so that will produce from there. Okay, so a bit more of an interesting result here from the non-market neutral backtest. So we can see that it was generally increasing over time a bit, uh, but then we had obviously this massive drop for the coronavirus crisis. So this is obviously showing that during this period, the music was more positive 
than it has been uh, generally in the past, which led us to have a long position. So let's have a look at the uh, graph we're most interested in here. And this is our exposure graph. So you can see that our gross leverage remains at one, but this is what we expected. Our net exposure is deviating from minus one to one. And you can see that in the recent past, it has generally been long. And this is where we get hit here. So, I mean, interesting results here. Um, so this net exposure is in indicative of the positivity of all of the countries sort of aggregated. So the world is more positive music here and more negative music around here. So interesting results here. For the last one, let's have a quick look at using our alpha maximization weighting scheme. And let's set this to market neutral. Okay, so here, this is when these parameters do matter. We're gonna have a turnover of one because we want quite a raw factor performance here and we're gonna have a maximum weight of 0 0.2. Okay, so as you can see again, performance not really much to talk about. It's quite similar to the normalized performance, but here we can see in our country exposure how this alpha maximization optimization is working. So you can see it's very on off with the different countries. You know, one week it may have the highest score among the countries and the next week it doesn't. So you can see it's a bit of an interesting performance here. And this is due to the turnover constraint being one. So it can buy and sell as much as it wants. It's not constrained with turnover at that point. So yeah, you can see an interesting result here. Okay, so this has been quite an interesting video. We've managed to take some alternative data, some music sentiment data, and implement it into a trading bot strategy in QuantConnect. As you can see, the results weren't particularly conclusive, but I think there could be something to, to be seen in the non-market neutral strategy using valence. So we'll see. One thing I'd like to note is I'm gonna leave this algorithm in the description below so you can clone it on QuantConnect fiddle around with the settings yourself, maybe try different audio features, maybe try different weighting schemes. Let me know in the comments down below if you find anything interesting. I'd love to hear if we can find some alpha within this data set. I've also uploaded the code to GitHub, so I'll leave that link in the description below as well. So thank you very much for watching this Stockify sentiment video. If you enjoyed this, please consider dropping a like. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be notified when more content like this comes out. As always, you can leave your comments down below with any questions or queries, and I'll do my best to try and answer them. With that, a final thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.